Hey Dylan, how you doing? I'm doing really good. How are you? I'm good. Good. Um, how kind of you to find me and want to do this. That's so sweet. Yeah. Um, I missed you the first time, so it's been quite a wait, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, okay. um, um, finally connect with you. Yeah, it's nice to connect with you. Yeah, I was really, really, uh, just, uh, it, it touched my heart. Just the whole project and everything, um, I love it. And, love yeah, uh, one thing that, uh, really stood out f from... It's just the whole idea of that we are not what happens to us and and moving past that and just from dealing with um, my mental health f f like for my whole life um, and then just uh, moving past that kind of just uh, getting the help that I needed so that I can actually um, cope um, yeah, and and that was that that was huge. Uh, I totally get it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, n not just to focus on the project itself, but I kind of wanted to know a little bit more about you. Um, you can ask me whatever you want. How's that? Okay. Yeah. Get yeah, out of here. You can ask me whatever you want. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if uh, you had uh ever struggled with your mental health in the past? Well, I'm an incest survivor and I share about that pretty openly. Yeah. One of the reasons why forgiveness is such a big part of my life. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, a lot of mental illness in my family and my husband's family. And even though it probably wouldn't be categorized as a mental illness, I come from a long line of alcoholics and molestation in the family systems, rageaholics, so mm. lots of mental illness in both lineages, mine and my husband's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's really, really tough to deal with uh, by yourself. Um, so I'm curious to what you did f for help or what was yeah. your, your breaking point? You know what's funny is, and you might be able to relate to this too, when I was, when I was 13, Mm -hmm. I remember saying to myself, my family is batshit crazy. Hmm. <laughs> and um, quite frankly, I know i got to go to counseling and get some help when I get older, and I'm in a position to be able to do that hmm. because this is pure insanity around me. Hmm. And um, I knew that at a young age, you know? Yeah. And so I've been a huge proponent of 12-step programs. Oh, good, yeah. Real active in adult children of alcoholics myself. So I was an alcoholic. I just happened to marry a couple of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Know, but you know how the system, you know how it goes. Yeah, my and dad's uh, uh, an alcoholic, so. And yeah, many, many years of incest recovery, lots of counseling, lots of courses. I've read lots of books and have taken so many and have taken so many courses on personal and professional development to work on completing my past. Hmm. So some freedom. Yeah. And I think it's a coincidence that I'm leading a project on forgiveness, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, <laughs> but, I mean, it, it's, it's good. I think it's therapeutic, maybe, for you, too, just yeah. to, to connect with all, like, different people and hear their stories. Um, for me, I find it, yeah, just connecting with different people, it's given me a whole different perspective, um, especially people with... Uh, physical disabilities um my nephew was born blind and he's seven now but that was kind of the eye opener for me um my sister lived with me we were really close and he was premature and it just kind of took us by storm like and the amount of surgeries that he had within the first month was just through the roof so the stress level was just, yeah, just crazy. Um, but it just, it really changed my perspective on life. Because here you are, and all you feel is, like, love for this little guy. 
but in my mind I couldn't wrap my brain around the fact of like he's blind and I always thought like oh if that would happen if that happened to me like life would suck like I'd hate everything but that's a very like <laughs> that's not a very good way to think um and it wasn't in like you just kind of move on and um adapt really and he's I mean, he's such a joy to, to have around. Um, I, I don't even know. Like, it, I get. I guess it, it's a blessing in disguise. Um. Yeah. But uh, so, so you've. I I think it's really cool that you actually. Um, <laughs> were willing to just kind of get the help right off the bat. Uh, that was something that I always struggled with, um, actually getting uh, that help. Yeah. Uh, do you have any words of advice for anyone that's in that kind of predicament? In order help to... That needs some help? Yeah. You know, you know the one thing that's so cool? And um, we all process things that happen to us differently. And, and you mentioned it earlier. I really don't think ha things happen to us. They happen for us. When hmm. you're in the midst of crap, though, it's hard to say, oh, yeah, this is a blessing. It's just crap. Yeah. Um, it isn't until you get perspective and move through different stages of emotions that you're able to even appreciate some horrible things that happen to you. And um, and I'm even, you know, like, I'm, even, I'm 52. I'm a grandma now, right? Mm-hmm. I can honestly say that being molested as a child, although I'd never wish that on someone, mm -hmm. actually is my catalyst for being a very strong, powerful force in the world. Yeah. Um, it, I had to work through a lot of stuff. I had to work through a lot of anger, a lot of shame, a lot of pain, mm -hmm. a lot of anguish. And, um, and I think that's what makes us amazing human beings. And everybody goes through this process differently. So the comparisons suck. And, you know, the biggest thing, don't compare yourself to anyone's progress. Yeah. They see it all the time on Project Forgive, like, oh, my gosh, they forgave so quickly. I almost say, so what? Who gives a crap? Yeah. Your process is your process. You're going to process it differently than others. Who cares if it takes you forever? I, like, And I know that's so anti-forgiveness. I don't think there's anywhere to get, Dylan. Mm -hmm. It's simply a... A becoming, you know. Of course, you're always striving for something better and something more beautiful and more happiness. And you know, when you don't feel that anger, when you don't feel that pain, you bury it, and that's what actually causes more anger and more pain. And allowing yourself to go through the process to me is the gold. It's what shapes you as a human and allows you to heal. Really, it really does. Yeah. Um, and holding on to things. That's why I thought like unforgiveness. Um, creates illness. It, it, it's lonely, and it will it'll eat you alive. Um, I've held on to things, yeah, just f from not um, not talking about it. T talking about it is big, like actually, and just like facing these issues is the only way you can get through them, really. Uh, you know, for anyone that's stuck, that's listening, it, you know, like you're, you're just so angry. You can't even see the possibility of forgiveness. You know, what I always say, and a lot of and I do it in my trainings and everything, because um, Project Forgive is now a leadership foundation. We train in these kinds of conversations. Mm. The first step to forgiveness is the willingness to look at the conversation. And, and I remember at different points, too, I've learned so much doing this project. I thought I had completely forgiven my mother. I went to a whole other layer of that. <laughs> so beautiful now. And, yeah. um, and it's at another layer of beauty. And it, I might go backwards in some places, too, or find some places that weren't complete. And that's part of the process. But what I've noticed, that if I feel stuck, I practice the mantra of saying, Sean, can you forgive yourself for not being very forgiving here? Can you forgive yourself that you just can't forgive right now and that's just the way it is? Yeah. My answer is absolutely yes. Because that's actually what starts the process of forgiveness. And it doesn't mean the other person did what they did was okay or that you're going to forget it. Who's going to forget their child being murdered? 
mean, yeah. it's simply silly. Yeah. Right? And um, no, it's more about seeing things with fresh eyes or with new eyes, with a new awareness. And um, doesn't mean you condone it, doesn't mean, doesn't mean any of those things. It's really just like you said, it's about getting peace for yourself so you can breathe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just, and move on. Like, you just gotta... <laughs> you, you, you have to, really. Um... Yeah, and you know, the other thing too, when I think about the word moving on, you know, the Project Forgive documentary, which is launching this year, Yeah. Um, Gary was the catalyst for us. Gary lost his wife and two children to a drunk driver. A drunk yeah. driver killed him. And the catalyst for the film was this story because we not only do know Gary and his family, we also know the man who killed them. Yeah. And um, in watching Gary go through this process over several years of losing his family, you know, he wouldn't call it moving on. Because, you know, graduation is getting ready to come up, and both his sons would have graduated from high school by now. Because mm. they, uh, they were 9 and 12 when they were killed by a hmm. drunk driver. Yeah. And, you know, what if moving on is just merely acceptance? Yeah. Because you know, because sometimes moving on implies that you're leaving it behind you. You know, there's certain things you can leave behind you, like the guy who, who flipped you off on the road and you're ticked off because he cut you off on the road. Like, you can leave that one behind. That's an easy one. Yeah. So, right? Yeah. The biggies. The biggies, like being molested or growing up in an abusive family system or a mother who was drug addicted. Yeah. Your own forgiveness around your mental health. You know, why can't I be better than this? What's wrong with me? It's a biological disposition. You have no control over the biology of your brain, the physiology of your brain. Yeah, exactly. And you kill yourself over that, you know? It's like, those are the cards you were dealt, man. <laughs> and um, what are you going to do with the cards that you're dealt? And, you know, and I'm not like dissing you saying moving on. No, I, just, yeah. You know, it's time to have another perspective around moving on because you're already there. There's nowhere to move to or from. You, this is it, man. This is it. No, I, 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 I see what you're saying and I totally agree. Yeah, because you don't want to... Those are memories that you want to hold on to um, and not move past. But I think, yeah, it's just learning how to cope with the now... With the, the situation that you are in now, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and it might be moving on from being in excruciating pain. Yeah. You know, so that you're in a more of a state of happiness and peacefulness and bliss, which is very possible for, for people that have experienced catastrophic events. You know, forgiveness isn't just about catastrophic events. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. It's about we deem ourselves personally as an affront. It could be a betrayal by a very dear friend that, you know, that being or feeling misunderstood in that way and that feels very deeply betraying so we can't judge what's big to someone else you yeah know what I mean? yeah we're different we're different people totally um yeah what i've discovered since doing this documentary and learning so much about forgiveness they're one and the same forgiving others and forgiving yourself they just go together mm -hmm. the more compassion you have for yourself like let's say you just totally screwed up and you're like, oh my gosh, you're so embarrassed or you feel ashamed you screwed up. When someone else does maybe something similar to you, mm -hmm. you have a lot more empathy when you've had compassion for yourself around that predicament because yeah. you're like, oh my gosh, I can so relate. So you're less likely to lash out at that person or hold it against them because they made this mistake with you mm -hmm. because you've experienced, yourself, you've experienced it yourself. And you know the dilemma of it, and you know how it could happen that it wasn't on purpose or whatever. Yeah. And then some empathy and compassion for that other person. Yeah. Oh, empathy goes so far. Um, yeah. I just really thank you for taking the time to, to chat to me. My pleasure. I just knew I wanted to spend a few minutes with you because I thought your heart was in the right place. Mm, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it's been quite a struggle, but uh, I'm in, I feel my focus and my motivation is really on, on point right now. Beautiful. Yeah. I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah.